Hey, this is Frank Yost, the CEO of Ketone 8. So today I'm going to do a shorter video versus the longer one hour video on sports protocol and focus just on fasted running. So after hundreds, thousands of people gave feedback on, on the drink and how they use it, uh, they're all discussing on the Facebook forum what works. I've been able to kind of compile, hey, how come it didn't work for this person, but did work for this person? What were the things that they had in common and didn't have in common? And the number one most reliable way to see gain with it uh, are people that already work out fasted. So if they're already working out fasted and then they take ketone ester before their run, that's when they notice you know, the biggest gains. So let me explain that. Um, if you're not working out fasted and you normally suck on some gel packets, let's say 20 calories of, of uh, no, not 20, 100 calories of glucose, 20 grams of carbs, and you go work out that way. And then the next day you come back and you take 24 calories of ketone ester instead, and then you go for a run and you're just not going to notice as much of a difference, if any difference at all, or maybe even a worse performance. So it's swapping out one fuel for another fuel is just not going to be as noticeable, especially with the glucose has just so many more calories versus what you would be taking with the ketones. So on a calorie per calorie basis, calorie means energy. In other countries, they don't use the word calorie, calorie they use the word energy. So you're going to be having many, many more calories, a lot more energy, and that, you know, all else equal, that might increase, you know, your performance more. However, people work out faster. There's reasons for working out faster, burning fat, uh, less inflammation, that glucose might increase your poor performance in the short term, but then it causes more inflammation and more problems. So then you can't work out as frequently. And so some people will work out fasted. So when you take the ketone ester and you're a fasted person, whether you're a keto person or a non-keto person, that actually isn't, wasn't a variable that we found was necessarily that, that different. We did find that Keto people might need less because they already have a baseline keto number and then takes it up from there. So for you know the general protocol for the KE4, people will take between a capful and two capfuls, so five and 10 mLs, uh, 10, 15 minutes before their workout. So women might take five, men take 10. It's a sensitivity thing. We just found that women tend to need, need less. Um, and if you're a non-keto person, you might go all the way up to 15 mL, so three capfuls. Above that, you start getting into the dual fuel protocol. Too much of a good thing is bad. Drops your blood sugar too much. You're going to have to watch the other um, video for that. But with KE1, uh, women might take half of a bottle. Men take a full bottle. And maybe uh, non-keto people, full bottle might be fine, or they might want to go you know, a bottle and a half before their workout. So some people might say, well, the reason I'm doing the fasted workout is to burn fat. You know, so will this stop that? We don't know exactly. There's, you know, the, the science is not clear there. But if you're, it would make sense that your body, if it has no fuel, it might be better for burning fat. However, Mike Mutzel pointed out that if taking some calories before your, your workout makes your workout more enjoyable, faster, you might end up adding an extra mile or two or afterwards you're just not as zonked and you're just more inclined to do it every day, that is going to be exponentially more important than the technically burning fat. But if you're going to do the exact same workout, same speed, same comfort, and you're going to do it every single day, then yeah, great. Maybe, maybe you should you know skip the esters and just do it fasted if that's, if that's your pattern and your routine. Another thing that fasted people sometimes have a problem with is after their workout, they just feel ravished. And this one woman said, you know, my problem isn't before the workout. My problem is afterward. I just, you know, they got those smoothies at the gyms when gyms existed uh, during the COVID time, I hear. Um, and she would get a, you know, huge smoothie, feel justified because she worked out really hard, but also really hungry. And that's just not, those two things are actually a problem. You feel justified because you worked out really hard, but then you're hungry on top of that. So some people will take the same amount of ketone ester right after the workout. You can actually do both. You can do it right before and right after. But the benefit right after would be for recovery, but also to tame that that you know ravished that feeling of just being super super hungry and then taking in all the calories. The other benefit of taking it afterward is if you have a 
uh, if you work out in the morning and then you go to work, your brain, while you did get a lot of oxygen to your brain, there's a lot of benefits for that, it can be a little bit taxed. If you're working out for a half an hour, an hour, your, your brain you know, can get a little bit tired. So taking the ester then, uh, instead of taking a cup of coffee, can you know, bring your brain back for the workday. And this one bodybuilder actually takes it only after his workout because he finds that it brings his brain back for his work day. So for him, it was more important to have his brain on after his workout. And maybe it allows him to go harder in his workout knowing that his brain won't be completely zonked. But yeah, so fasted workouts, one thing to watch out for also is a placebo effect. We had uh, Tara doing some running in California. I saw on Instagram that she said, oh, I'm going to go for a run. And she downed one. She's like, I feel great. And as I predicted, I was trying to text her, slow down. She went out like a bat out of hell. And much of that might have been placebo effect. And she did end up crashing. When she got at the end of her run, she looked at her text and said, you know, slow down. Don't go so fast. Don't placebo into it. She's like, oh, now you tell me. So yeah, you don't want to placebo into it. Any of the benefit should be more towards the end of the workout where you might notice less lactic acid uh, buildup and you just might be less long. So yeah, faster workout, that's the most reliable way. But if you're not a fasted runner in general, it doesn't mean they can just su suddenly start and notice a benefit. So non-fasted, uh, people who do non-fasted workouts can be a little bit you know, tougher to notice a benefit there. And that would be you know, the longer uh, protocol for sport that you'd have to look at. All right, thanks. Email me if you have any questions. Frank at ketonade.com and we have our community link on the top of our front page and that goes to our Facebook group where people discuss how they take it and, and things that didn't work as well.